Good afternoon, Keenan. We're here in your garden. We're pruning. This is your dill plant. The last group, I think fifth grade, that was out here, Miss Harrison brought you over and she showed you that this smells like dill pickles. So if you like pickles, this is what they use. And the plant has already flowered. Miss Baker showed you the carrots, how they flowered. After the flowering, we get little seed pods. So our dill has done this and your blue bonnets are already starting. And if you shake them, I can actually hear the seeds inside. So we're going to harvest them and we can save these in a cool, dry spot. And then we can plant these seeds and every single pod can make a whole new plant just like this one. Awesome. Let's see how you prune. Just save that. Yeah. Very cool. Good way to... So we're going to keep them in a bag. We also might do an art project with them because they're a really cool texture. <laughs> Go listen to it. So the rest of your herb garden is looking great too. So Miss Sanford just showed you about the dill plants that we're harvesting seeds from. All of these awesome little brown seeds we can save for replanting but there's also a whole lot of activity over here on the onion flowers this one actually has a dill flower that's kind of grown into the onion flower so the white one is the onion and if you follow the stem down down here mixed with this rebecca flower is a red onion but the onion stem is gorgeous and the flowers, this one hasn't bloomed yet, and the one next to it has. Pretty interesting. Some love bugs. This is parsley. And then we have some lemongrass and more Rebecca flowers. These leaves have a wonderful soft texture to them. They're just like fuzzy and soft. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, over here there's some blue bonnets of them and the blue bonnet flower makes seeds and there are the seed pods more pods we saw broccoli seed pods and now blue bonnet seed pods and inside those seeds are forming and growing so some plants hide their seeds inside of a protective covering called a pod and some plants do not like this dill plant there's no pod it was just the flower and then the seeds Baker and I are cleaning out your garden and we noticed this really pretty flower. This is an onion flower. You've seen lots of flowers today. And at the bottom, we have obviously your flower, your stem. Ms. Baker says you can eat the stem. And it holds a lot of water inside. It's also hollow. You can hear the crunch. And at the bottom, you have the bulb, which is your onion and the roots which are nice and soft and bright white. Healthy plants usually have bright white roots. Awesome, that's a big plant. Let's see how tall it is next to you. Yeah. So I'm five foot, so it's almost five foot. I, what do you think, like four, eight? Yeah, Yeah. Like the whole plant, that's a tall plant. <laughs> okay, so you can see the inside is hollow. I wonder if we squeeze it, if you can see water. It's yep. completely hollow, that is so interesting. Yeah. Let's see the flowers again. We just cut the flowers away. We're gonna try putting them in a vase and see how long they last. Usually um, flowers on onions and since it's a bulb and herbs do really well in water. So we're gonna try it out in a vase. Kind of a pretty arrangement. So you can eat the root or the bulb and enjoy the flowers in a vase. Keenan, your butterfly garden is gorgeous. We've got the sprinkler on. Ah, I'm getting wet. The flowers are amazing. This is Budlia, this beautiful white flower is called Budlia, Salvia, some red Salvia. So pretty, look at the lantana. Everything is looking good, especially with the sprinkler on. More pink Salvia. The colors are amazing. There are bees everywhere and butterflies. I know you guys already know this because you know how beautiful your garden is. But the Budlia plant is a really great nectar plant. So I'm not sure if you can see the butterflies all flying around. That's a painted lady right over there on that white. The name of that butterfly is a painted lady. So just a lot of great activity with pollinating insects. Love it. Exactly what we want to have near 
your food gardens. Okay, so growing in your garden, we have squash growing here. It's a little bit droopy because it is a hot day today, so we're gonna make sure that we turn the water on and then Miss Norris is gonna come turn it off for us. So watering the garden as the temperatures rise is super important. But the squash looks really good. And then this whole area was where your carrots were growing. And now look at this harvest. Beautiful carrots over here. And some of them were growing in the crack of the bricks. And Miss Sanford was here with me and she's over here pruning the other garden. But look what she dug out. This carrot was stuck between the bricks right here. And so look how it fits like a puzzle piece. So the root had nowhere to go and it just grew as it could in between this crack. So now it's this shape. Pretty funny. Plants are pretty interesting how they will just adapt and continue growing no matter what their surrounding is. They will just keep on going. That is pretty interesting. So then you can see how tall some of these carrots had gotten. Some of them are old. This is our pile of carrots that we wouldn't want to eat, but we can feed those to some animals. And then this is the end of the life cycle. This is the carrot flower. So this would have bloomed. It's just time to get this cleared out. So it didn't bloom, but this is a carrot flower. It blooms into a pretty white round flower. And then once the flower gets pollinated, that is where the carrot seeds would be found. All right, Keenan friends, we have something really awesome on your remaining carrot plant. So this is a carrot leaf, and I'm sure you guys all know how to identify a carrot plant now by the leaf. That's an inherited trait. So all carrot leaves look like this. But while we were harvesting your carrots, we noticed these really cool caterpillars. Let me zoom in. I can focus on him. This is a woolly bear and we just looked it up and googled it and it doesn't say when you google what caterpillars eat carrots what comes up is swallowtail butterflies but this is definitely not a swallowtail. Most fuzzy caterpillars when they go through metamorphosis the adult stage is a moth and this woolly bear caterpillar is going to turn into a tiger moth. So I'll try to find a picture and add it to this video garden tour, but they're really fast when they want to be. They're very fuzzy. A good thing to remember is that fuzzy caterpillars often will sting you. So this isn't a caterpillar that you'd want to pick up. Any caterpillars that are fuzzy, it's best just to stay away, look at them, but don't get close to touching. Many of them even have fuzz or hairs that are much longer but they're pretty invisible and you think you're staying far enough away but then you get stung so i just stay a really nice safe distance when i'm looking at fuzzy caterpillars but so what we're adding in now is organic fertilizer i've taken this out of the original packaging but this is an organic fertilizer it has fish meal molasses cottonseed meal alfalfa lots of different natural products to make this fertilizer and so the carrots are out and we added the fertilizer and now we're turning the soil before we get the next seeds planted. In this area, we're going to plant cantaloupe seeds. We're gonna prepare the same, so the soil the same way down here. We added the fertilizer. We're gonna add a little bit of new soil as well. Turn it, mix it, and then plant watermelon seeds down here. Now we are adding soil. The soil has little rocks in it, that's shale, and that helps good airflow. It helps have good, nice little pockets of air. So we've got this nice new soil, organic fertilizer. We're amending this spot because the plant, the kale that was growing in this spot, sucked up or absorbed all the nutrients from the soil. So the soil is kind of empty of the nutrients that the next crop will need to grow. So we're amending the soil, getting it all nice and full of nutrients before we plant those watermelon seeds. We have two different types of seeds. Can you tell? This one is watermelon and this one is cantaloupe. They're both going into your garden today. Awesome. And let's zoom in on the tomato plant. These beautiful yellow flowers. 
they have a hairy stem. It's pretty breezy today, so my camera's having a little bit of trouble focusing, but the tomato plant has a hairy stem. They have yellow flowers. It's getting taller and taller. Look how tall it is with this tomato cage. It's looking really good. So all we have to do today is do a little bit of cleanup. We're gonna prune some of the branches so there's better airflow. We're going to make sure that nothing is crowding it. There is right next to this, there's potato leaves. I'll move this over and then here's a pepper plant. So sometimes we have to kind of move things over as they get growing really nicely. We need to make air and space so that no uh, pests can get in here and start eating things or disease. So air is super important when you're gardening. Here's a pretty little pepper flower. That's where the pepper will grow. There's a little pepper growing right down here. You see that green pepper? Oh, there's a leaf in the way. There it is. Do you see it? Little bitty green pepper. So everything's looking really good. Potatoes, pepper, tomatoes, and this is kale. And you, know, you guys know this kale has been here for a long time. So it's time for the kale to come out. We're going to go ahead and get all of the kale out of the garden. This is a really strong root system, so it's going to take a lot of work to dig this out. But we'll get all this out so that we have more space. Then over here we have another tomato plant, some green beans growing here, that strawberry from wintertime, and then here is the broccoli. You can recognize the broccoli over here. Let me get down here. There's a little bit of broccoli left. See, you can see that that's broccoli. But it's super old, and the way I know it's super old is look how tall it is. And up here at the top are the seed pods. So these little things that look like tiny green beans are broccoli seed pods. And as they develop, the seeds are inside. So I'll put down the camera in just a second and take a picture. Um, and show you what's inside, but they're little black seeds. I don't think I can do it with my hammer in my hand. So I'll get these seeds so that you can see them. This is the end of the plant life cycle. The flowers make seeds, and the seeds of broccoli are hidden inside of tiny little seed pods. One last thing that's very interesting on this plant is that we have some ladybug activity, and it's not just the adult ladybug that I'm seeing here. Let me show you. There's a couple of adult ladybugs hiding down here in the center. I don't know if you can see them, but this is what caught my eye first of all. Let me zoom in. Y'all see that? Ladybugs go through metamorphosis just like a butterfly does. And so a ladybug lays eggs, the eggs hatch, the larvae eat little insects, and then after larva comes pupa. This is a ladybug pupa. Get some light on there. And so out of this pupa will call, crawl an adult ladybug. The kale is coming out. There's a, a ladybug that's in your garden helping keep it clean by eating the pest. But look at this plant. How heavy would you say that is, Miss Sanford? Um, I'd say five pounds with all the soil on it. So look, that one of the functions of a root is to hold the plant in the ground and it holds on to so much soil that's a good visual of the function of a root. Yes, it absorbs water and nutrients from the soil, but it also anchors the plant and holds it in the ground. That's really hard. We have to use a shovel to dig these kale plants out because they are so stuck into the ground with that big, strong root system. We're all done for today. We've got your seeds planted, watermelon and cantaloupe, and we have new fertilizer in, and the garden looks amazing. So we just wanted to tell you, gave you a challenge actually. Next time you go outside, see what living things you can find. Either crawling, flying, hopping. See how many living creatures you can find. We found quite a few here in your garden. Gotta look really close sometimes at those details. But I know you love science as much as we do, so we hope you are enjoying seeing what your garden is growing like, and we'll check back in soon and show you how those seeds have sprouted. See you next time. Bye, Keenan.